The new MacBooks with M1 are all the rage these days. You can watch unlimited hours of benchmarks and speed tests and comparisons showing how much better these M1 MacBooks are compared to other Intel, Macs, and PCs. But is the MacBook Pro with M1 a better desktop than the 2020 iMac? Brought to you by Hope Mattress. Hey, I'm Jerry, and my 2020 iMac that I bought this past summer is amazing. It has that bright 5K display, a sleek all-in-one design, and I can leave a bunch of things plugged into it all the time. This iMac had become my go-to computer when I wasn't using my iPad Pro with Magic Keyboard. It has a fast 10th gen 6-core i5 processor, 40 gigs of RAM, and I can stack as many hard drives off the back of the thing as I need to. When the new M1 MacBooks came out, I was under the hype spell as much as anyone, and I wanted to make my new MacBook Pro my everything computer. The M1 MacBooks Air and Pro are amazing devices. You really do get great advantages over similar laptops for general computing needs. Advantages like big performance gains and power efficiency. With my day-to-day -day computing needs, apps feel fast to open, run smooth, and everything is cool and quiet. In many cases, the M1 MacBook Pro runs as good or better than my 27-inch iMac, which costs twice as much. The iMac is obviously a desktop computer that functions just like a desktop computer needs to. The MacBook Pro M1 can absolutely become a desktop computer as well. Performance-wise, the M1 is right up there with this i5 iMac and even beats it in some tests. If you look at CPU tests with Geekbench, the M1 Pro beats the 2020 iMac in both single and multi-core CPU tests. The new SSDs in the M1 laptops are also really fast too. The iMac, however, does have an advantage over the M1 Pro with multi-core Cinebench tests, and with the Geekbench Metal Test, the base iMac Radeon 5300 nearly doubles the GPU graphics performance of the M1 Pro. This actually makes my Final Cut Pro export slightly faster on the 2020 iMac than with my M1 MacBook Pro. Though in my regular daily use of browsing, email, scrolling Twitter, logging into work servers with Citrix, there's no real perceptible performance difference when using these two machines. With performance being nearly the same, the main thing you need to make a laptop and desktop is a display. And if you want an external display for a MacBook that, in my opinion, is as good or better than the 5K iMac display, then that is the BenQ PD3220U, which has HDR10 support and P3 wide color, just like the iMac. There are, of course, many other displays to choose based on features or price, like this Samsung UR55 28-inch display. But the design, color, and solid aluminum base of that BenQ makes it one of the best options available. The 5K iMac display, on the other hand, is in a class of its own. There are a couple of 5K displays on the market that you can buy, but none of them come close to the quality of the built-in iMac display. Where many external displays actually max out between 300 and 400 nits of brightness, the iMac can push out 500 nits, making HDR content really pop and the wide P3 colors really stand out. Now, whether you connect a display to the MacBook Pro via USB-C or Thunderbolt or some other kind of adapter, that only leaves you with one available port on the 13-inch MacBook Pro. I frequently need to connect external SSDs or SD card readers when working on videos, and sometimes I need both at the same time, so that's where you may need something like a dock or a hub. Just like displays, there are plenty of good options to choose from, like the CalDigit TS3 or the Soho. These will give you additional USB-A and USB-C ports, and depending on the dock, additional display connections or Ethernet. The iMac, though, has more ports on the back, including four USB-A ports, two USB-C Thunderbolt ports, Ethernet, SD card, and headphone out. The ports on the iMac are not in the best location tucked you know, behind the display, but they are there, allowing for multiple connections at peripherals and hard drives without the need for additional docks. But you can also relocate some of the ports to the front with something like the Sateki Clamp Hub Pro, which gives you front access to SD cards, three USB-A ports, and a USB-C port. The last main thing I think you need for a good desktop configuration is a decent pair of speakers. The iMac, of course, has a pair of built-in speakers that sound really good, especially with the 2020 iMac, which added the T2 chip for variable EQ and enhanced bass response. They are loud and clear, and what more could you want? As decent as the built-in speakers are on the 13-inch MacBook Pro for a laptop, they are not great for desktop use where you generally want a louder, more clear sound. Or at least I do, and when I'm trying to edit audio or watch a video, sometimes I just want to pump up the jam. Pump it up. So, grabbing an external pair of speakers is a must for me to be able to use the MacBook Pro as a desktop. Again, with speakers, there's a wide range of prices and features, 
But for me, I like the Kanto U2 speakers. They have an audio DAC for digital processing, and I can get them in a MacBook matching space gray color. Once you have the computer, a display, and speakers, we can now look at a few of the differences between the MacBook desktop and an iMac. With the MacBook Pro, you actually get a few bonus features compared to the iMac. First, you get Touch ID, which is not available on any desktop Macs. I love waking the computer and unlocking with Touch ID. It's really fast and reliable. It almost never fails. Second, it's a laptop, so right away it's like a two-in-one device that can be disconnected and you can walk away to continue work wherever you want somewhere else. Third, because the MacBook Pro runs Apple Silicon, there are a number of iOS and iPad apps that you can run now on this laptop. I've also found a few downsides since I moved to this setup with the MacBook Pro M1. First, the MacBooks and Big Sur seem to have a lot of issues with external displays. I've tried multiple displays and multiple configurations and ran into issues with most of them. Either the external screen doesn't turn on or it comes up distorted from sleep or some other random things with refresh rate or resolution. There's also been a few other oddities that I've seen, like when I connect the MacBook back to a Hubbard display, the volume is turned all the way up for some reason. I don't wanna go into all of those issues today, but I do have a few videos that show all of the problems that I've run into, and you can check that out if interested. But the short story is that using an external display with the MacBooks with M1 has not been flawless or stress-free. And second, beyond technical issues, this is just not as clean of a setup compared to something like the iMac. There is a lot more complexity to the desk setup with running video cables, docks, speakers, and then you need to power it all and figure out some kind of cable management if you want it to look nice. I wouldn't say that I'm a clean freak, but constant disorganization can make me a bit anxious. And no matter what you do, there will always be more clutter with a laptop desktop than with something like an iMac. The iMac does have the advantage of being a pure desktop. Having additional ports on the back of the iMac and having a stationary computer means I can leave hard drives connected to the iMac as needed. This also means that you can use the iMac for something like a Plex media server or file server or time machine server for other computers and not worry about the server going offline if you wanna take the laptop to a couch or on a trip. In my opinion, there are two downsides to a 2020 iMac over a MacBook Pro for desktop use. First, the iMac is a desktop computer, which means that it sits on a desk and it doesn't move, obviously. Second, there's no biometrics like Touch ID on the MacBook Pro or even Face ID. You can set up to unlock with an Apple Watch, but it's a bit clumsy and slow and sometimes it just doesn't work. It would be nice if Apple could add Touch ID to an external Magic Keyboard and maybe add a T2 chip that syncs with the T2 chip in the iMac for added security. One can only hope for something like that, I guess. Speaking of hope, Hope is a new mattress brand that delivers a crazy comfortable night's sleep at a far lower cost than some other online brands. Made from the highest quality materials, right in the heart of Texas, Hope mattresses are designed from the bottom layer on up to provide the most comfortable and supportive sleep you've ever had. No matter what type of mattress you prefer, Hope has it covered. From the standard Hope mattress, which provides the cushiest of sleeps, to the Aspire Hybrid, which combines four premium foam layers, along with an edge-to-edge -edge coil system to provide superior support and keeps you from rolling off the sides. I've had my new Hope mattress for a few days now, and I just have to say that the Aspire Hybrid is 100% more comfortable than our previous foam mattress that we bought online. Right away, we knew that this mattress was different in the way that it looked and felt. Not only is the new Hope mattress soft and supportive, it also helps us sleep cool with the help of phase change material woven right into the fabric. That's a fancy way of saying that the mattress keeps you cool and comfortable all night long. And even my wife has been able to sleep in for the first time I can remember after so many months of uncomfortable back pain from our previous mattress. The best part about Hope Mattress is that you don't need to take my word for it. You can try a new Hope Mattress for 120 nights risk-free to see if it's the perfect sleeping in mattress for you. Shipping is super fast. And when you buy a Hope Mattress, your purchase donates 100 meals to Feeding America to help those in need. Please check out HopeMattress.com and use discount code JERRY for 10% off your new mattress and my thanks to Hope Mattress for sponsoring this video. So back to the original question. Is the MacBook Pro with M1 a better desktop than the 2020 iMac? I don't think so. The M1 MacBook Pro can be a desktop computer with compromises. You need extra stuff like a monitor and speakers, which adds complexity and in the case of the M1 MacBooks and macOS Big Sur, some frustrations. You have plenty of accessory options to choose from, but it can be difficult and expensive to configure options that are as good as what the iMac can offer. With the lack of ports on the MacBook Pro comes the need for additional docks or hubs. 
but you do also get the option to pick it up and just go mobile. The iMac is the perfect desktop computer, in my opinion. It has everything you need built right into a neat, compact, attractive enclosure. The built-in display can't be beat by any comparable external option at a reasonable price. It has enough ports to do everything I need it to do, and it can serve different roles like an always-on available backup server or media server. I think it's time that I move back to the iMac for my desktop use, and maybe I'll start using the MacBook Pro M1 for my couch and mobile device. What do you think? Have you turned your laptop into a desktop, or do you prefer separate devices? This will be the first time that I have two primary computers, so if you have any suggestions about how to make workflows better between these two computers or how to keep stuff in sync, let me know below. If you want to hear more about the many display issues I've had using the M1 MacBooks, you should check out this video right over here. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it, hit subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.